Welcome to Beginner Laser Project number six. And for this project, we're going to be making a laser cut layered sign. And there are several variations here. We're going to get into it coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop. And for this is Beginner Laser Project number six is how to make a laser cut layered sign. We're going to be using both two millimeter plywood, you get it Dollar Tree. You get different shapes and you can cut them out of and I'll show you those here in a minute. And quarter inch plywood which you can get at your home store and we'll be, I'm using Luan plywood here in this case. You can also use quarter inch underlayment, quarter inch birch, quarter inch whatever. Uh, but it's going to depend on um, how you want the end result to look and I'll show you the different variations here. So just right off, here's two different variations right here of the same sign. One has, it's just strictly laser cut, that's this one here, it has a lattice look to it. And this one here has the lattice and some laser engraved lines. And both of these options will be available here. And you can reverse the look of it if you like. This is a lattice one with dark on white instead of white on dark. And for the quarter inch project, this is a three layer and these are not, this is not finished, it's not glued together, I'm just holding this together right here and you can pick out whatever type of finish and colors or whatever you want to do with that and we'll get into that after we get some pieces cut and I'll show you how to do this. So first I'm going to take you on the computer and I'm going to show you what these files are. I'm going to start out with light burn. So I've got it opened up here and I've got my laser chosen on this particular uh, project. I'm using the Jakota L1 with a honeycomb board and with air assist. So these files I already have pre-made here. We'll open one of them up. So your very first layer um, for the two layer on two millimeter plywood would be this one here called layer one. That will open this up and this is centered in the page. You want to make sure it's in the center. So I'm working from absolute coordinates and my job origin is from center. You can see that over here in the right hand side, the laser panel. So we want to make sure we're in the middle, go up here to this bullseye and move to page center. Should have my range long up there. There we go. Now if you have a range long up, you can just go right up here. Right there and it automatically moves to the center of the page. So let's say that this was offset Let's say it was up there and you want to get it back in the center. Go up here and just hit that and put it back in the center. So my cut here, this 2 millimeter plywood, 300 millimeters per second and 90% power and this is with a 10 watt laser. That would be your very first layer. I'll open up the second layer here. Should be layer 2. And this is set to cut and line. So this is the one you would have with the uh, engraved lines. So to give you the other option on layer 2, layer 2 2 millimeter lattice. So now you see you have a little bit different look. And all of these settings for cuts over here is for a 10 watt laser. So if you wanted the optional larger back piece for the third layer. That's layer 1A and I'll make one here for uh, 2 millimeter, millimeter plywood as well. This is for quarter inch plywood. Here you'd be cutting at 250 millimeters per minute at 100% power with three passes. Now there's also an upper layer for this which is layer 2. Lattice look right there. And we have two different settings here. Uh, the blue layer there. We are cutting at 300 millimeters per minute at 100% power and the black we are cutting at 250 millimeters per minute at 100% power with four passes on the blue and three passes on the black layer. The reason for that is to make sure you get a good complete cut on the uh, blue layers because you have a lot of intricate pieces there. The uh, 
black layer there is not quite as intricate and it's mostly around the outside. So what you'll want to do once you have your work set up is frame it of course and we'll get on the uh, laser here and we'll go over this. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to cut a couple of these. What I'm using for material on the quarter inch plywood is just quarter inch Luan plywood, but not this piece because it's uh, like warpy. So I, I would never try to use that on a laser. It's warped in every different direction here, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I could probably put the steam iron to it, put a concrete block on top of it, and straighten it out. We'll, we'll see there, but that would be a reject. Don't put something all warpy on there, you're going to have a problem. For uh, the demonstration I'm going to do here, I'm using two millimeter plywood. These are shapes you can buy at Dollar Tree. Buck and a quarter. If you're doing the two layer sign, uh, you'll just need two of these. So you'll need to cut the strings off, of course, because you don't want to have any strings attached. All right, make sure you set the focus on your laser for your material. This two millimeter plywood, I've already set the focus here on this, but I will demonstrate again how to do that in just a moment. Lay your piece down. You do not have to have a honeycomb board, but it will really help. You do not have to have air assist, but there again, it really helps. So if you have both of those options, you'll want to use them. So I've got my piece just kind of laid in here. Since I'm not working off of a layout grid, I am going to frame that to make sure that I am going to be on my wood. And as you can see, I need to move my project up a little bit. That's what's nice about having it framed slowly, as you can move it while it's framing. Okay, so set your focus. On the Jakota here, it's got this little kickstand you fold down. And as you can see, it's already just touching that, because this is already focused for this. But then you would loosen this thumb screw and raise your laser up and down accordingly. And don't forget to put the little focus kickstand back up. So now I'm ready to go. I'll just hit start. Again, I'm working from absolute coordinates because this laser has limit switches. If your laser does not have limit switches, you would have to work from uh, either user origin or current position and position your laser according to whether you're starting from the lower left corner or from center. As a rule, I always work from center. And I need to turn on my air assist. So I just noticed I was getting some scorching there. That air assist eliminates that scorching on top, as you can see. It's right here where the line started. You can kind of see that dark scorching. Once I turn the air assist on, you don't see that anymore. So here's our first layer piece ready to be taken out. And right here is where you can see a little bit of scorching from where I didn't get the air assist turned on, but after that there's no scorching, none on the back, except right here where I didn't have the air assist on. Well, there's our first layer. Okay, for the second layer here, I got another piece laid in here. I'm going to do the uh, one with the engraved lines and the lattice. I need to frame this first, make sure I'm on my project. When I'm working off my layout grid, and once I get set, I don't have to frame every time. But when I'm working off a honeycomb board and don't have a, a precise layout, pretty close here. I always frame my work. Where it ran off in that upper right corner, I'm not concerned about because that's outside the graphic. We should be good to go right there. I'll just hit start and let this one engrave and to give you an idea of engrave time it is 14 minutes and 22 seconds on cut and engrave on this piece. I'll give it a start and away we go. It does the line engraves first and does the cut second. You always want to do it in that order. Don't do your cut and then your engraves because uh, pieces could move. The line engraves here are being done at 40% power with two passes. That reduces the amount of uh, any scorching you would get on top since this is not a through cut. I just noticed my plywood has a defect in it right here. I probably should have used the other side. I didn't see that when I laid it on there, so 
Don't do what I do. Make sure you uh, inspect your wood first. When it's finished its line engraves, it'll go and do its cut layer. piece all cut out. Now you're going to have a bunch of little pieces to knock out of there. Sometimes just by tapping they'll come out but some of them won't. For that I use one of these little picks and I can just poke these little pieces out of there etc. So there's our first layer. Here's our second layer and of course it will go on top. like so. And I will show in detail here the different things you can do with this. Got to make some room here first. Yeah, let's look at a few options here. As you can see here laying on the table there's some different options you can do. This is what we just cut out. That would be the back. This would be the front. Of course with the engraving on there you would not want to stain this but you would uh, just clear coat it and do a alternate color on the back. What I may do on this back one is uh, a chalk paint and then I will glue this on top of it like so. Now another option this is these here are all two layer. If you were to go with a three layer this is setting just on a piece of plywood. You have your back layer which is a little bit larger than the second layer which would then glue onto that like so and this one here on top and you can do whatever colors or stains or finish or whatever you like on it. So there's another option there that's doing a three layer. Once you get this type of thing mastered there's a lot of things you can do. One of our real popular items at Halloween is this sign right here and this is not glued together. It's just a black quarter inch Luan plywood and then this graphic is cut out of quarter inch plywood and these are glued together and it's a Halloween sign. And I have done some and there are videos on my channel of some uh, more complex ones with multiple layers. And speaking of multiple layers, you can do things for different types of holidays. This one here is for Easter. And this one here actually is a shrunk down version of what it's, it's supposed to be much larger. I wanted to see if I could do a shrunk down version. And you can, but it becomes extremely complex because your top layer has such a very, very thin piece that you have to be able to glue on and it's a little tough. And you can see up there I have a little chip in this one. But that's fixable. So other things you can do. Let's say you want to uh, get a little more contrast to this. Let's just take this one. This is just a piece of pine. You can put that on there and you could have contrasting colors in the back of that. Or if you wanted something a little more rustic looking. You could use a piece of cedar. And incidentally, if you stain this, make sure the stain is completely dry before you glue it or it may bleed into your other layer. That's what happened on this one. But it gives a little bit of a kind of an old west rustic look if you want to do something like that. So there's a lot of options and things you can do with these. So take your pick. What design do you like? How do you want to finish it? Do it any way you like. So there's a lot of variations on this welcome sign theme. Laser cut, good way to start out learning to use your laser. You can do cutting, engraving, learn how to do these layers. So how do you put these layers together? Ah, I'll show you. A conventional way to glue these layers together would be to use, uh, I like to use this. It's tight bond, it's called quick and thick. And it doesn't run all over the place, it, it's a, a thick glue and you, it gives you a little bit of time to position things. Just don't go sliding things around or you're going to see glue where you don't want it. Especially around that lattice and the uh, 
inside the letters. Another option, and the one I use most often, is Tight Bond Instant Bond Wood Adhesive. Uh, this is a CA type glue. It's available in thin, medium, and thick. Medium is the best for this type of project. The thick is just a little bit too thick. And you do not have to have the accelerator. If you use this by itself, it will bond in, say, 30 to 45 seconds. If you use the accelerator, you would put this on, example, the front piece, and when you have your glue applied everywhere on there, you would spray your base with this, set your top piece on top, but boy, you better be right because you've only got about four or five seconds before it's bonded, and then you won't be able to move it again. So only if you're really, really good should you use this. And I'll put a link in the description on uh, where to get these different items. This, this I bought locally. I, I'm sure they have it on Amazon. And this I buy on Amazon because it's the cheapest place to get it. And you can actually get a kit with the, the thin, the medium, the thick, and the accelerator, and it all comes in one. So what about the files to make this? I will put a link in the description of where you can get them, and they will be free. They'll be on... Uh, someplace I put them, one of our websites, I'll get, I'll put a download link in there and no charge and they are set up for light burn. They're, it's not set up for laser gerbil or any, it's not just g-code it's strictly for light burn. If you are using la laser gerbil you could download these light burn files, open them up in light burn and then convert them to g-code and then run them from laser gerbil if you would desire the cuts and layers are all there. There'll be files in there for both the two millimeter plywood here and quarter inch plywood. If you would happen to move up to like three millimeter plywood or something in between in there, you may have to make a minor adjustment on your cuts for speed and time. And of course, there'll be a link in the description on uh, the Jakota laser, where to get one, the laser, the air assist, and the honeycomb board. So all that stuff will be there as well. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. And of course, we're always looking for subscribers. And there's a whole series on beginning lasers. We have a playlist now where you can start out with Project 1 and move up. And like I said, this is number 6. And there'll be more to come. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the shop. We'll see you in the next one.